Hey, how you doing? It's Clayton here from HowToDrawComics.net and welcome to today's video. In this demonstration, I'm going to be sketching up a design for a comic book idea that I had a little while ago. In fact, over the last few weeks, last few months even, it's kind of been brewing in the back of my mind. Do you ever have that where you just you start out with a very basic idea and the longer you leave it kind of ferment in the in the mind, the more developed it becomes, the more fleshed out it gets. Well, that's kind of what's been happening and what inspired this character design here. And this is going to be one of the main characters within the story that I've come up with. And I guess I felt that now was a good time to maybe explore the characters that would feature within this comic book, just because in my mind, I'd finally come to a conclusion to this comic book story. Um, now it's a sci-fi comic book, um, with uh, a little bit of drama in it and a little bit of horror here and there. You know, I don't think you can really have a, a cool sci-fi story without a bit of horror and drama along the way. And and really what the story is about is it's, it's set in this world where essentially what you've got is these um, augmented artificial bodies, right, where your consciousness can be downloaded into these bodies, you know, if something happens to your body, um, they, it can essentially be replaced. And so, you know, and of course, there's other stories out there that, that are already kind of follow along the same lines as this idea. But uh, basically, in this particular world, uh, society is very kind of hierarchical. In other words, there's only some special, powerful, rich people who are actually able to get these artificial bodies. Um, you know, if something happens, like they end up dying, they can get their consciousness downloaded into these bodies. And this particular character here is actually one of the engineers who puts these bodies together. Okay, so he's one of the main characters. And, you know, he's kind of like a middle class dude. Like, he, there's no way in the world he would be allowed to you know, have one of these, you know, I call them capsules, right? Uh, the artificial bodies. He, there's no way in the world he'd be allowed to have one of these capsules. He's just, you know, a worker at the manufacturing plant that kind of puts them together. Um, you know, but unfortunately, and uh, this, is, uh, this is kind of where the story takes off, his brother is terminally ill. So, you know, there's a bit of a conflict here where he works at this manufacturing plant. He could replace his brother's body and, and download his consciousness into one of these artificial ones and save him. But of course, it's very illegal and it would be, he'd be in, imprisoned essentially for doing such a thing. Um, but yeah, he does it anyway, except it turns out that he accidentally puts his brother's consciousness into one of the most powerful gangsters in this particular city. Um, and so, you know, very, very quickly, he's got a whole bunch of people after him and they're on the run. Uh, they've got the, this assassin, you know, this terrible assassin who is uh, really trying to get his bounty. So, uh, yeah, you know, it's it, and that's kind of where it takes off. And it gets into the, into the story. And I won't kind of bore you with the details just yet. I haven't fully fleshed them out. And uh, I'm not really sure how much I should share, to be honest, because I'm not exactly certain when I'm going to get around to we're even beginning this comic book for real. You know, I've, I think I've scripted out the first panel of the first page, and that's about it. You know, when ideas come to me, I try to get them down somewhere. I try to write them down because very quickly I can forget them, and there's nothing worse than that. If you've ever experienced the same thing, you know, you come up with an awesome idea, usually before you fall asleep for the night, and then uh, what you realize in the morning is that you've completely forgotten it. So, you know, I take the time to, if I come up with an idea on the cusp of consciousness and I'm about to fall asleep, I pull out my phone and I got a little notepad uh, application on it. So I kind of write it down on the notepad application and try to make sure that I don't forget it, especially if it's a good one. Sometimes I'll wake up and it won't be as good as I thought it was. And I'll be like, why the heck did I write this down? But uh, yeah. All right. So back to the illustration at hand, you can see that this is really just a, uh, a sketch. You know, I didn't want to uh, get too detailed with it, at least initially. Usually I start out with the best of intentions. You know, I really only want to do a sketch. I don't want anything complicated, but uh, I get carried away. And it ends up being this exceptionally intricate looking drawing that's far more refined than I had intended to take it to or of a refined level. 
And so, yeah, that's kind of what happened with this particular concept. Um, now, the belts that I'm placing around his leg there with all the pouches and stuff, you know you know me, I, I love my 90s comic book characters and uh, pouches are just a given when it comes to, to them. But really what this is, because he's an engineer, is I'm, I'm kind of thinking about giving him a uh, like a worker's tool belt, right? You know, my dad's a, a tradie and I remember him always carrying around this this tradie belt with hammers and drills and stuff in it. And I was trying to get the kind of the same aesthetic there. But, uh, you know, I think that it came out looking a lot more <laughs> cool than a normal gun belt would look. But, you know, I, I think that when I go back to rehash this particular design, I'll probably go ahead and try to have those pouches come out a little bit further just to, to really bulk them up a bit. Maybe even put a few tools in there like poking out like drills and there's a screwdriver to the right there if you you can maybe see it. It's just, it's very hidden there. It's very subtle, but it's kind of sticking out there. However, yeah, you know, that's, and that's kind of like one of the main, I guess, key design elements that I wanted to include within him that tells us that he is an engineer, a builder of some kind. And you can see there that I had a little bit of a, a reference there that I was kind of working from. In fact, I had an entire page of them. And usually I'll get, you know, 10 to 20 different references up, usually following the kind of theme that I want to go for, some of the actual subject matter, like the jumpsuit you just seen, um, and, you know, any any things that I need to make sure that I get right, say, for example, I am designing his tool set, well, I need to know what a drill and a screwdriver actually look like, and, I'm, you know, I don't have that stored away inside my mind. I could probably guess, you know, and oftentimes I do just make things up and it looks okay, but... You know, if you really want to get something that looks accurate, you want to try to have that reference material there to just flesh out the details and, and make sure that you've got what you're drawing down onto the page in an accurate way. Because uh, otherwise, if someone who um, is very familiar with the subject matter you're drawing comes along and, and decides that you haven't really done a great job on depicting that particular subject matter, they'll call you out on it. And that can be a little bit embarrassing, you know, but... Hey, I mean, accuracy matters when it comes to this stuff. I mean, you don't have to be totally accurate, I guess, with sci-fi um, themed stuff. You can kind of make up your own inventions. And as long as it kind of appears as though they could work in reality, it's kind of okay. All right, so we're sketching out his legs here. And, you know, this, this guy is really just a normal dude, right? So oftentimes, if you've seen my art before, you'll notice that I draw a lot of really buff, like, ripped characters that look like they just gym out every day and that's all they do. And, in, you know, when they're not doing that, they're saving people. But, um, you know, I really wanted to come up with a character here who was a bit more relatable. And so he's more of a normal guy, right? I mean, underneath the clothing, you probably saw me placing in some of the muscle structure and he was still pretty buff. But uh, I really wanted to the final design to come across as, hey, this dude could be you or I. And because he is one of the main characters within the book, that's very important because if the audience can't relate with the main character or, you know, somehow emotionally understand them on, on a deep and, and profound level, then that's when there's going to be a disconnect there between the story and the reader. So, you know, especially when it comes to comic books, being a visual medium, you want to make sure that the visuals you are showing them, presenting to them, that they're going to be able to connect with the viewer and pull them into the story, immerse them, right? Suspend their, their disbelief a little bit and, and let them kind of sink into the story that you've created for them. If they can't do that, then um, unfortunately, you just won't have a very engaging book uh, that, that people are able to get into. So I've kind of got the, the front of his design down onto the page. Again, it's still very loose. Like, this is quite sketchy. Yeah, I haven't really uh, gone ahead and, and, I guess, refined the details that I've placed down there. Like, everything that needs to be there is there. However, it's not refined. It's not really super clarified, in a sense. And now what I'm working on is the back view of him and a little bit of a side view. Now... The cool part is, is that these different views are still kind of showing his personality in a way which really, really brings it across to us as the viewer. You can see that, 
you know, he's got a little bit of attitude in his stance there and he's he's coming through. Like it's almost like just by looking at these images alone, you kind of get a sense for who this character is. And it's important that that carries across, especially within your concept art, because I think it's important not just to show their design, but to show who they are and their personality as, as a whole. You know, I mean, that is part of who they are. So when you can broaden the scope of the the idea that you're presenting into a, a larger picture, a larger depiction of who they are beyond just the, the physical look of them, uh, that can be a very valuable thing, especially if, you know, you're trying to get a feel for the character as well. And that was something that I was doing here. I was trying to think about, you know, who is this character? What are they like? What would it be like to be sitting in a room with them and to actually have a conversation with them? What would they sound like? What kind of voice tone would they have? How would they carry themselves? Would they be confident? Would they be kind of a little bit reserved? Would they be uh, super charismatic and loud and, and, and obnoxious? You know, I think about all these different personality types that are out there. And, I, I tr and oftentimes when you can even start to I guess, uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? When you can start to base your characters on people you know and get get a, a bit more realness within their personality incorporated into the design, then that can also increase the realism and, and just make for a more convincing character. And that translates to a more convincing story. Now what I'm doing is I'm going over the top of the design that I've already done. You can see that I've converted it to blue here in Manga Studio using the uh, the color, layer color function over to the right hand side of the screen. It's that little blue square there. Um, and what that allows me to do is kind of make a distinction between the underlying layers and the overlapping layers. And that's important here because I am overlaying a jacket on top of the design that I've already done. And, you know, I just wanted to do this because I think it's important that, you know, when you're creating a character, you want to try to show that another real thing about people is that, you know, they're not always going to be in the same outfit all of the time. They're going to change. They're going to, sometimes they'll have messy hair. Sometimes it'll be combed back. Um, sometimes they'll be wearing an overcoat and sometimes they'll be wearing a singlet, right? And I guess, when I'm designing these characters, I'm kind of visualizing inside my head the kind of narrative that'll that that'll they they will partake in, and I just envision this guy, you know, going home from work, and you know, kind of chilling out, making a coffee, just in a, in a singlet, and you know, maybe the uh, the jumpsuit that he's wearing underneath all of this is kind of you know he's taken that off. But then maybe when he goes to work and it's it's cold and it's cold morning, right? He's got this overcoat, this cool looking jacket that he wears over the top of everything else. And you can see there also that I've given him some goggles because I figured that, you know, if he's working with, with tools and stuff, he'll need some protective gear. And I probably should have given him a helmet on top of it as well just to, you know, really get that idea across, make it a bit more, uh, I guess, uh, you know, just a bit more realistic in a way you know you want you want everything to kind of fit together congruent you know you want the design to be congruent with the idea that you're trying to present you know if I'm presenting to you an engineer and he's not really wearing engineer type protective gear or clothing and he doesn't really look like an engineer then that's a problem that means you're failing in terms of your ability to visually communicate an idea it means you, you you haven't designed your character accurately so, and you know, of course my design isn't perfect by any means necessarily. There's definitely things that I could add to this design, but you know, your design doesn't need to be perfect. You just need to make sure that you're kind of considering these things, that that's the kind of headspace you're in where you, when you're designing a new character for your comic book or a video game or a movie, whatever it may be. And yeah, I, I really have a fun time creating characters for the different stories and the, and the I guess the you know, back in the day, it started out in video games and I drew characters for video games and stuff like that. I've always loved designing characters because I, I just, I guess the story that surrounds them begins to play out inside my mind and it, it becomes fun. It becomes a total immersive experience for me just creating them. 
Okay, so now what I'm doing is I am going over this rough sketch and even though I'm not 100% refining what I've done, I'm kind of laying in some line weights around the key areas of the character to really make them stand out, to clarify what I've created here, what I'm presenting to the viewer. And you can see what a huge difference this makes already. You know, I really haven't gone in and articulated any of the details too much. I've added in a bit of rendering, you know, thrown that in real quick. Even even that is, is very rough, though, to an extent. I haven't 100% thought about whether or not the lighting is accurate there. I've really just let my instincts take over here. And that was one thing I realized about this character. You know, for the last few months, and you, and you might have already known this, I've been working on, you know, my new course, uh, how to draw superheroines, how to comic book character creator superheroines is, is the actual title of it. And I've just been spending months and months scripting that thing out, you know, making sure that's ready to go. So I haven't really had a whole lot of time to draw. But, you know, now that I have gotten back to the drawing board, oh man, it's been so good to scratch that itch. I, I gotta say, you know, when you're all you're doing is every day doing script up and, and writing out, you know, dialogue, I got it. It gets old very, very quickly, especially when you're an artist and you just all you want to do is draw something. Um, so it's been really great to be back drawing. And, you know, one thing that I realized was that the the way in which I approach drawing is, is very natural now. You know, it's it's something that I somehow everything I had learned in my in my past experience over those last few months where I wasn't drawing at all, I had time to process and, and store itself away. It's a very weird experience, I have to say, because, you know, when when people tell you what you're going to have to do to really hone your skill set as a comic book artist, they say, draw as much as you possibly can every single day and never, ever stop, right? Because if you don't use it, you'll lose it. And, you know, so I was always kind of like very wary of stopping drawing for any length of time. You know, I thought that if I did, then I would lose my abilities and I wouldn't be able to draw as well anymore, or I would at least go backwards in terms of my skill set. But I, and maybe at some point that would have been the case. Like maybe if I was still starting out and, you know, I was still in that, that really deep learning process where I didn't really have a good grasp on the fundamentals. Maybe if I had have stopped at that point, yeah, my, I would have forgotten what I'd learned and my skill set would have gone backward. But I don't know. Now it, it feels like when I leave leave it for a little while, um, it seems to sink in. And all of a sudden, I've got this, this natural rhythm to the way in which I work. And it really does feel like an unconscious competence where I don't have to think about it anymore. And I, I always feel like I'm bragging here because it feels so good. Like, I really enjoy the process of drawing now. And I haven't really felt that for a long time where I've just been able to sit down and just create, not think about whether or not, not analyze it, not judge it, but just create something. And somehow, some way it comes out on the page looking okay. Like it looks pretty good. I'm, and I'm in a weird, strange way. I'm thinking about it on another level, right? So I'm still considering, you know, where the light source is, for example, to, so that I know where to place the rendering and the shadows and that kind of thing. You know, I am still asking myself these logical questions, but they seem to be answered almost instantly as I'm drawing, you know, as, as soon as I ask the question, it's almost like it's almost like the way I'm working just takes that into account, right? And so, yeah, it comes out onto the page very fluidly, and I don't really have to think about it. And I just love that feeling. You know, it's been something that I've really, really appreciated as I've gone back into the drawing uh, after the the superheroines course. And this is one of probably the first the first sketches that I've done actually uh, maybe not you know I've done a few commissions here and there as well don't usually do them but some some jobs are just too fun to pass up so I've been really enjoying just getting back to the drawing board look that's it I've just really enjoyed drawing again and I think you know one thing I realized after completing this sketch is that I was so energized afterwards you know, I, I felt so like pumped up and, uh, you know, I always joke around about this, you know, how they've got like introverts and extroverts and some people get energy from being alone. Some people get energy from being around people. Well, I'm an introvert. 
Like I get energy from creating, from drawing. And I certainly felt that way after I'd completed this sketch, I gotta say. So yeah, you know, I'm just messing around with the composition here, wrapping up this sketch, and uh, that is about it for this video demonstration. I hope that you've enjoyed it. I've, uh, it's great to be making YouTube videos again. I have to say, I wanna put them out more regularly. Um, I'm not gonna think about it too much, you know? Like, I, I have so many drawing demonstrations that I are just sitting on my computer, and I really wanna put some dialogue behind them just to, you know, talk a little bit about what it is that you're seeing me do. I, I don't really want to post up videos where I'm just putting in music behind it and, you know, you get to watch it that way. I want to actually, you know, describe what I'm doing and I guess connect with you guys and, and hang out a little bit. But I think that I'm just, I'm not going to think about it too much. I'm going to jump on here at least once a week from now on and, and try to put these videos out on a more regular basis. Try to get the How to Draw Comics YouTube channel happening again. And if you are still subscribed, thanks so much for sticking around. I know it's been a while. Well, until next time, keep on practicing, keep on creating, and I'll see you next week.